From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Hunter's Fury. In the background, one could hear the trumpeting of an elephant, the howling of a hyena, the roar of a lion. And yet this was no tangled jungle, but a collection of concrete and steel buildings that made up the zoo of a modern American city. One of the buildings housed the administrative offices, and Douglas Hanley, a young assistant curator, occupied a tiny cubicle on the second floor. At the moment, he wore a look of pain and consternation, almost as though he were to face to face with one of his savage charges. But actually, he was alone in his office, and he was merely talking on the telephone. Talking? Well, for the most part, he was listening. Yes, dear. Yes, I know, but... No, but Esther, we can't afford it. No, we're overdrawn now. Well, I'll try to dig up the money somewhere, but... Hello? Hello? She hung up on you, huh? Riggs, where did you come from? Your door was open. Well, that doesn't mean you can storm in here like you owned the place. Oh, take it easy, Doug. I didn't mean to intrude on some private matter between you and your wife. Door was open. Oh, I'm I... sorry. I guess it's just that Esther's got me on edge. She keeps forgetting about the size of my salary. She's got sort of fancy ideas. <laughs> Don't they all? Say, talking about fancy ideas, we finished building that stone archway for the special new polar bear cage. I thought you might like to okay it. Well, I can't get over there for a while. Uh, I've got a sick panther cub I've got to take a look at. But incidentally, Riggs, it's not a cage. The man who's contracting the job ought to know that. Well, I keep forgetting there's not an iron bar in the whole contraption. But it seems sort of automatic to call a place where you keep animals a cage. If I had any, I'd put my own money into improving the quarters for all the animals. No iron bars, no concrete floors, no cages. Only natural barriers like, like pits or water to keep the animals on the inside from the animals on the outside. Yeah, <laughs> Well, this animal sure hopes they build a million of these fancy contraptions. I'm making a nice profit on the deal. I sure appreciate your putting the good word in for me. Your bid was the lowest and your specifications were the best. There was no reason why I shouldn't have insisted on your getting the job, Riggs. Now, Doug, I, I hope you won't take it wrong, but about that phone call I barged in on. Yes? Well, it looks like you're in a little hot water financially. I'd be glad to help you out with a couple of hundred bucks. Thanks, just the same, Riggs, but I'll manage somehow. I heard you say you try to dig up the money. Well, what's a good friend if he won't give you some dough? Give me? <laughs> no, I couldn't accept a gift. But, of course, uh, a loan of about 200 would help me out of a tough spot. Oh, well, that's more like it. I'll write you out a check. Then we'll walk down and take a look at that swell job you threw my way. I'll meet you there right after I've taken a look at that sick panther cub. Thousands of miles away, deep in the heart of the African jungle, at exactly the same moment, another man knelt by the side of an ailing panther cub. And while Tarzan poured healing herbs into the animal's wounds, Torgo, his small native friend, looked at him curiously. Why you do that, Tarzan? Well, the little fellow's mother is dead, Torgo, so she can't lick the wounds Bolgani the gorilla inflicted. Unless we do something, you'll die. Torgo know that, not what he means. You mean, why am I going to all this trouble to, to save his life? Deal. Tarzan often kills she to the panther. Why he not kill this one? Well, I've often told you, Torgo. I kill only when a jungle animal threatens my life or when I need food. Were I to kill every animal I encounter, the jungle would soon be completely empty of animals. Tarzan kill every animal in jungle? No. Oh, I have plenty of help. The members of your tribe kill many. Many other tribes do likewise. And the white man who comes with his thunder stick and his traps. He's the worst of all. Tom and Gunny bad. Oh, no, no, not all white men are bad, but they don't realize that when they kill more than they need for food, 
when they fired every living thing that crosses their path, they're destroying the jungle. Destroy? The animals furnish our food. We make clothing and shelter of their hides. Their skins are used for our sleeping mats, and, and they feed on the rodents and insects that prey on our fields. Once Africa's animals are gone, we, we too are doomed. Animals gone soon? Well, many kinds of animals are already extinct. That, uh, that means that there are no more of them. That's why we must nurse sick animals back to health. And why we must fight the white men when they come to kill. The panther cub Tarzan nursed was soon healthy and strong again. And so was the cub Douglas Hanley had nursed. But the troubles of civilized life were more complex than those of the jungle. And now Douglas Hanley was faced with a serious threat. It was in the form of his friend, Herbert Riggs. Did you see that newspaper article about the animals? I gave the reporter the information. Then it's true that an African elephant's worth $6,000, that a giraffe brings 4000 a hippopotamus is worth five grand, and that a white rhinoceros is good for 15 Gs? <laughs> of course it's true. Good specimens are almost unobtainable these days. You know all about animals, don't you, Doug? Well, it's been my life's work. And you stand in with these zoo officials. They'd contract for any animals you'd bring back. That I'd bring back? I'm not a hunter, Riggs. You are now. You and I are going to Africa. Oh, but that's ridiculous. We're not... Well, it ain't ridiculous to me. There's a million in the racket. And you ain't turning me down. I'd like to oblige you, but my work's here in the zoo. And if you don't give me the okay on this deal, you won't have a job here. What do you mean, Riggs? Just this. I got a canceled check I made out to you for 200 bucks. But I paid you back. In cash. And you didn't get a receipt. If I should give my version, you didn't pay it back. You got me that job building the polar bear contraption. And that was your rake off. Why, you... Now, easy, easy. <laughs> I suppose it would look like that. We'll contact every other zoo in the country, too. We'll supply them all. When we get back home, there won't be an animal left in the African jungle. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll continue with our story of Hunter's Fury. Many months had passed since Tarzan had nursed the panther cub back to health, and he was on his way to the Punya village once again. He traveled rapidly through the upper level of jungle growth, and at his side, leaping from branch to branch was Nakima, the tiny monkey, who looked upon Tarzan as a god. From time to time, Nakima scurried off on expeditions of his own. Now, as Tarzan dropped from a tree inside the boma of the Punya Kral, the chattering monkey scampered away. Jumbo, my bulky. Jumbo, Tarzan. Why Manu run away? Oh, he distrusts men. <laughs> the only reason he accepts me is that he thinks I'm half monkey. Is right for animals distrust men, for men distrust animals. Not right, other way. What are you getting at? Tarzan, remember panther cub he saved after Borgani, the gorilla, killed panther's mama? Of course. When Tarzan leave Punya village, boy, Torgo, keep on like nurse to panther. Oh, I can see nothing wrong in that. I'm, I'm happy that Torgo has begun to realize that animals can be our friends as well as our enemies. Panther and Torgo, too much good friends now. Everywhere Torgo walk, panther come. Now panther grow large is dangerous. Already he claw Mama Nagama. Not want Torgo's own mama touch him. Oh, I'll see what I can do about that jealous panther. Nadio, Tarzan do something. For Sheeta, the panther, kill someone of tribe. Torgo, can't you see that he is dangerous? He's even snarling at me. Not do anything if Torgo tell him not to. Well, perhaps you're right, but I was. He's right. Watch. Sheeta, not make noise. Quiet. Now, Sheeta, sit down. <laughs> well, you do seem to have him well trained. Now, lie down, Sheeta. Well, that's wonderful. You've done a marvelous job of training him, Torgo. But I'm told that he permits no one else to come near him, nor you, that, that he scratched Mama Nagama very badly. Yes, but that because Torgo left him alone. Not leave him again. She did not hurt anyone when Torgo with him. But you can't be with him night and day, and a grown panther oh, is yeah. after... 
Tarzan! I'm inside the Hema. Come in, Mabuki. Mabuki, tell Chief Tarzan is here. And Chief say he should be... Watch out, Mabuki! Watch out! No, Sheeta! No, stop, Sheeta! Not hurt, Mabuki! Good, Sheeta. He do what Torgo say. Togo, I have tried to reason with you, but I'm through with words. Anyone who'd seen Sheeta leap at Maboki as he came through the door would know that he's not a safe pet to keep in a village. Now, Togo, you may keep him with you tonight, but in the morning I must take him deep into the jungle and set him free. Oh, no, not take Sheeta. Not take friend of Torgo. Not take my Sheeta from me. <laughs> <laughs> That night, when Tarzan and the people of Punya were asleep, Torgo fastened a slender rope of twisted vine around the neck of his pet and crept from the village. But when the two strange traveling companions had reached the tall grass and the dense undergrowth of Sheeta's birthplace, the animal lost all vestiges of domesticity. With a deep roar, he broke from Torgo. The slender rope snapped and the magnificent beast plunged into the jungle night with Torgo attempting vainly to follow. And a few miles away, a safari led by two white men plodded through the Congo night with the aid of flaming torches and trained guides. Douglas Hanley and Herbert Riggs were hunting for animals to take back to the zoos of America. Hey, you! Keep moving! You're getting paid enough to set a decent pace. I wouldn't shout at our guides, Riggs. We're pretty dependent on them. Besides, shouting is apt to frighten away any animals. How about those torches? Won't they frighten them? I don't think so. The jungle animals, like men, are curious. I think they may come to investigate the bright light. Say, uh, this little ravine here might be a good place to stop and spread the nets. Okay. Hey, you! Our expert says this is a good place to stop. Now, if we can mark off a small area and then take the nets and suspend them from the... Panther! Give me my gun, Doug. This is a magnificent specimen. Maybe we can capture it. I'm not taking any chances. My gun! Here. I used to be a good shot. Now, if I can hold my arm steady, get a bead on him. Not just, Sheeta. Not shoot him, white man. Hold it. You'll hit the boy. So I hit him. I'm not risking no, my... No, Sheeta. That makes noise. Play it. Good, Sheeta. Now, sit. Good. Now, lie down. Hey, get that. It's amazing. Uh, lead the panther to this cage over here, little boy. No, not what she did, cage. Now, just until we've had a chance to talk for a few minutes. We'll let him out later. Sure? Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's the fella. Right in here now. Go in cage, Sheeta. You know, man let you out later. There's a kid that can handle animals the way he can. Why, he'll be a big asset for us. He'll be right handy to have around the camp. White man keep Torgo with them? Well, say, looks like he goes for that deal. You mean you'd uh, like to stay with us? The deal? Torgo stay with white men. If man called Tarzan come look for Torgo, you tell him you not see him. Uh, Torgo, why are you uh, afraid of this uh, Tarzan? He want to take my panther and set him free. Oh, one of those birds who's against capturing animals, huh? <laughs> well, don't worry, Torgo. We won't tell him you're here. And if he starts trying to set the animals we capture free, he'll get more than he bargained for. The white men had made camp, and Torgo was fast asleep in one of the tents, even before the hunters had spread their nets of steel-like cord and taken their sentry posts. In the darkness of the Congo night, a deceptive calm descended upon the encampment. But in the village of the Punyas, all was confusion. Torgo's absence had been discovered. Tarzan took to the trees following Torgo's spoor. And as he traveled through the upper level, Nakima the monkey joined in the pursuit, dancing ahead, chattering furiously. Suddenly, Nakima screamed. He had been caught in a giant net. Tarzan leaped to the aid of the small monkey, and he too was soon enmeshed in the steel-like nets of the white men. I wouldn't fight those nets, jungle man. What? We had them specially designed. The more you fight them, the tighter grip they get. So, you're responsible for these nets. You're a hunter who has come to rob the jungle of its animals, eh? Rob's an ugly word. And you're not in any position to start insulting people. Why are you raising that gun to your shoulder? We've been expecting you. You're Tarzan, ain't you? Yes, but yeah. what... Yeah. And you don't like the idea of people capturing animals, eh? Well, this gun will guarantee we won't have any interference from you. <laughs> In 
just a moment, the exciting conclusion of Hunter's Fury. In the name of heaven, Riggs, put that gun down. This is my business. And mine. Up until now, I've taken all your orders, but I'm not going to stand by and see you commit murder. All right, Doug, I won't shoot him. But I can tell you this. We ain't setting him free. You, drag that heavy cage over here. Put it right under this tree. That's it. Right here. Now open the top and I'll drop our two prisoners in. Hey, Riggs, the monkey slipped through the bars. Yeah? Well, monkeys don't bring much anyway. And Tarzan won't slip through. But he's got his knife arm free now. When he can't cut through those bars, you can bet your life on that. Well, I'm turning in now, Doug. You keep a watch over him. And if he escapes, you'll answer with your life. Pleasant dreams, Tarzan. I, uh, I heard the other man call you Doug. And you call him Riggs, huh? That's right. You seem strange, partners. Yeah. I guess we do. You don't seem like a man who hates animals enough to want to capture them and keep them behind bars for the rest of their lives. I don't approve of bars and cages at all. But I think a number of animals should be taken back to civilization. Why? Well, I don't believe a child's education is really complete unless he's seen an elephant, a mother kangaroo with her young, a few-day-old zebra running about, fending for itself. You, you talk about animals as though you loved them. I do. I've seldom met white men with that feeling. You speak as though you weren't a white man. Oh, I'm white, all right, but sometimes the actions of men like Riggs make me ashamed of my race. Why do you take his orders? Well, that's uh, sort of a personal matter. It's obvious that you're afraid of him. Yes, I am. If, if you were to set me free, I'd guarantee he'd not harm you. I can't set you free, Tarzan. I've never pled for my own life, but when I was caught in your nets, I was searching for a small native boy by the name of Torgo. He, he ran away from his home, and he may be in great danger somewhere here in the jungle. Torgo's safe. He, He's what? asleep in a tent on the far edge of the camp. Torgo's here? D does Riggs intend to take him home as a zoo specimen also? I don't know what Riggs intends to do, but I guess I'll have to go along with whatever he plans. Well, Doug, how are things coming? Everything's repacked and ready. The safari will be ready to move along in a couple of minutes. What did you do with the boy? I bought him some breakfast into his tent for him. Then sent him ahead with one of the porters. I don't want to take any chance on his seeing Tarzan. Just what do you intend to do with Tarzan? We're just going to leave him here. We can spare that one cage. But why, snakes can get in, or scorpions. Or even, even if they don't, he'll starve to death. Maybe you think I ought to let him loose so he can mess up our whole expedition. But you can't leave I him. I came here for animals. They're worth a fortune, and I intend having them. I'm going to fill every one of those cages. And I'm leaving that last big one for the white rhino. Fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen grand. And I should let that jungle man free. <laughs> Come on. Let's get rolling. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tarzan. Well, Nakima, you decided to come back and visit me in my cage, huh? But, but you brought me some fruit. It was very kind, very intelligent of you. Well, I'm afraid I can't live long on the food you'll be able to carry to me. Now, if you could bring me a file so I could... Wait a minute. Nakima, do you see that stone over there? Dan Yeland? Get it for me, Nakima. Get me that stone. It took quite a bit of coaxing, but at last Nakima fetched the stone. It was too soft to make any impression on the bars. Later, Nakima fetched a second and a third stone, but they crumbled at the first touch. Not until the evening of the second day did the monkey bring a stone that was hard enough to serve as a crude file. And even then, it fit in slowly. Painfully so. Nakima watched his guard with animal curiosity. And then he too began to file away, imitating Tarzan monkey fashion. Nakima began to chatter happily, but Tarzan knew that it might be days or even weeks until he could free himself and follow the trail of Torgo and the hunters. And in the meantime, the safari moved further and further along the Congo Trail. Weeks passed, and fortune seemed to smile on the ambitions of Herbert Riggs. Well, there's another elephant to take back. 
See that he stayed down well. He won't get away. Nothing gets away from us. Yeah, you said it. Look at them all. Each one just a nice fat deposit in the bank. What a rich! Now all but last cage filled. Well, so? You say last cage for white rhino. Yeah, that's right. Hey, you've been a big help tracking down that game, Torgo. You promised if I help you let Sheeta out of cage. Yeah, he's a good specimen. We're keeping him. But you, you can scram. Riggs, we're not turning that boy loose in this wilderness. Oh, ain't we? As soon as we got our white rhino, we're heading back. And I'm not being held up acting as a nursemaid's ready. Hey! What's he saying? What's all the excitement about? Nancy White Rhino in Riverbed. I see him, and I can shoot him from here. But you want to capture him. He'll get away if I don't shoot. But if I can plug him in the leg, it'll slow him down. Now, get out of my way. I've got him. Now, get in there after him. Get in and tie him up. He's badly wounded, and he's dangerous. You can't expect the natives to risk their lives trying to tie him up. Wait in there, I said. You, help me. Lead the rest of them. Who can kill us? If you don't start out after him, I'll kill you. I'm not letting 15 grand slip out of my hands. Now get going. No, let go. All right, you ask for it. Briggs, in the name of heaven. Now the rest of you, hop to it or I'll give you the same. Behind the frightened natives was a man mad with his elephant gun trained on them. And in front was a wounded and raged rhinoceros. But even the roaring beast was less fearful than the now almost insane Riggs. They waded into the water, into the path of the charging rhino. And just when the death of a dozen of them seemed inevitable, a white savage leaped from the trees at the river's edge. His knife found the vulnerable spot between the soft folds of the rhino's belly, and the knife plunged again and again and again. <laughs> Now Tarzan headed for the bank. But the weeks of privation and near fasting had taken their toll. He staggered uncertainly and fell to the ground. All right, men. You can put Tarzan in the cage we had saved for the white rhino. And lock the boy in with his friend, the panther. Riggs, you're insane. It's sane enough to kill you, too, if you try to interfere. Now do what I told you, men. Or I'll shoot you the way I did your head, man. Every one of you, if I have to. And so the safari started back towards civilization. But a small monkey had decided that he liked the game of filing iron bars. Only this time he worked under Torgo's supervision with a steel file he'd stolen from the safari's toolbox. Unnoticed by the crazed rakes, he worked in the dead of night until finally several of the bars were almost cut through. Torgo think maybe Sheeta can break through bars now, Nikima. Quiet, Nikima. Quiet, Sheeta. Good, Sheeta. Now break through cage. Please, Sheeta. Understand, Torgo. Break through cage. Here. Right here. Good, Sheeta. Now we can find Tarzan's cage and then... Hey, what's going on over here? I thought I heard... Get the panther off me! Save me, Tarzan! Sheeta, come back! Sheeta! Sheeta! What's happened? I I heard a panther roar it. Riggs... Sheeta killed bad man, then run away. Torgo not mean him to kill Buon Rag. It's all right, Torgo. I know you would have stopped him if you could have. Not even Riggs deserved a death like that. Ah, but now there are other things to think about. Free Tarzan. Right, that's the first thing. Well, now what, Doug? I'll let you call the plays, Tarzan. And I know I don't deserve any consideration from you. If I hadn't been weak, I would have done something about Riggs. No, weakness can't be overcome in an instant. But I hope you'll gain strength now. I'm willing to free the animals, all of them. Tarzan, Torgo wanted Sheeta back. Torgo, Sheeta repaid us for saving his life when he was a cub, and, and now he's gone to join his own kind. And most of the animals you've captured, Doug, must also be free to join theirs. But... I do think you should be permitted to take some of them back. A, a pair of each kind, perhaps, so that boys and girls everywhere, like like Torgo, can learn to know and understand the animals of the jungle. In 
In just a moment, a preview of a very unusual story of Tarzan. Somewhere in the jungle, the drums beat ominously. Twins have been born to a native chief, and the tribesmen are scaring off the demons that have brought them. For more firmly implanted than any other superstitions are those surrounding accursed twins. And on their way into the jungle are two beautiful American girls, also twins, who are doomed to meet the strange consequences of these jungle superstitions. Tarzan, the transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Listen to our next story, Trouble Comes in Pairs, another thrilling episode of The Lord of the Jungle.